starting a clinical engineering department will be the topic of this lecture. The lecture will be separated into three parts. The first part will be uh, a general introduction. The second part will be a planning phase. And the third part will be uh, the business plan. In the first part, we should firstly address two questions. The first question, why do hospitals need a clinical engineering service? The second question, which is a better choice, the in-house or the out-house clinical engineering service? And finally, we will talk about the factors to consider when starting a clinical engineering department. The second part will be a planning phase. Uh, it will be separated into four points. The first point will be the steps required to start a clinical engineering department. The second point will be a workload analysis. The third point will be about the qualification and educational levels required for the team of this department. Finally, we will talk about the clinical engineering shop requirements. Uh, the third part we will uh, have also four points. The first point will be the business plan. The second point will be the reporting channel uh, for a clinical engineering uh, uh, department. And the uh, last two points will be about the educational program for managers and BMT inside the department. Prior to start with the part one, uh, I will show some photos uh, which help to understand uh, the environment where the clinical engineer is working. Uh, the clinical engineer should communicate internally and externally. Uh, the clinical engineer should communicate internally with the hospital administration, nurses, doctors, and patients. Uh, also, the clinical engineer should communicate externally with vendors, uh, third party payers, and so on. Now we will see the photos for the uh, internally communication uh, part for a clinical engineer with patient, with hospital administration, and hospital staff. Uh, this picture shows a patient in an ICU room, an intensive care unit room. Uh, this patient is surrounded with uh, many medical devices. Uh, in this photo, we see a hospital administration meeting. Uh, another photo shows uh, the hospital staff uh, inside the hospital. The, another also photo for the hospital staff in one of the departments uh, of the departments inside the hospital. Externally, the Clinical engineer should communicate with vendors, with regulation agencies, third party payers. We will start with the, the photos for vendors. The vendor is a representative of a manufacturer. We, as you can see in this slide, we have a collection of uh, well known famous manufacturers such as Siemens, Philips, GE, uh, Beckman Coulter, Olympus, and so on. The relationship with the vendor or supplier starts when the clinical engineering department make a request to purchase a medical device. Uh, this relation will develop during the installation of the device, as we can see here in these photos, uh, and will progress during the operational life of the device. Uh, this is a photo for the installation of a PET CT uh, device inside a hospital manufactured by GE. It's called GE Discovery 710. This is the final photo after the installation of this device. Now, another uh, external party which we should communicate with it are uh, the regulation agencies. Uh, one of the famous one is the Joint Commission International. Another one, which is locally here in Lebanon, is the HAS. Uh, now we'll see some photos for the clinical engineering, uh, for clinical engineers working uh, inside the hospital. 
In this photo, we see a biomedical uh, engineer trying to fix a blood warmer. Another photo shows a clinical engineer testing an electronic board. Uh, here we can see an electrical engineer installing uh, a three Tesla MRI manufactured by Philips. Uh, here we see a clinical engineer repairing a CT scanner. Uh, here we see also a clinical engineer with a testing tools which are essential uh, in our uh, work to fix or uh, diagnose or repair a medical device. Here we see uh, a clinical engineer, a female clinical engineer, trying to make uh, a calibration uh, or uh, what we know as IPM uh, inspection uh, and preventive maintenance for a patient monitor. Uh, also, here we see another female clinical engineer trying uh, to make a repair or fixing uh, for a CT scanner. Uh, in this diagram, we see uh, the 2015 statistics for in, uh, in USA uh, concerning the salaries, uh, salaries of the different levels of the clinical engineering, uh, engineering service department team. Now we'll start with the introduction. As we said before, we will have uh, three points. The first point we should address the question why do hospitals need a clinical engineering service? The second question which is a better choice the in-house or the outhouse clinical engineering service? And finally we'll talk about the factors to consider when starting a clinical engineering service. So why do hospitals need a clinical engineering service? There are many reasons behind why the hospital need a clinical engineering service. Firstly, a quality patient care. A quality patient care uh, means the need to verify the operation of devices and deal with the equipment problem effectively, expertly, and rapidly as required for a quality patient care. As we said uh, in the lecture one, uh, the early starting of uh, the early reason behind the starting or beginning of uh, our field, the clinical engineering, are uh, the problems uh, in the electrical safety, uh, which, le which led before uh, to a high number of uh, serious injuries and even deaths uh, for many patients in USA and worldwide. Uh, another reason why we should have a clinical engineering service inside the hospital is the financial savings. Uh, a clinical engineering service is, matter, is a much better choice than uh, equipment uh, served under a manufacturer service, which will be a more expensive choice. Another reason why we should have a clinical engineering service is the consultation services provided by the clinical engineering uh, department. This includes uh, the medical device assessment, uh, selection, uh, incident investigation, patient safety activities, and so on. Uh, another uh, also reason behind the need for a clinical engineer is the work, as we said before, with the regulations and uh, agencies and the standards and the compliance with the standards. So compliance with regulations and the standards, for example, uh, like the Joint Commission or the GCI, the Joint Commission International Requirements, for example, for medical equipment inspections, uh, emergency service of a critical medical equipment, addressing equipment incidents, and so on. So the reason why we should have a clinical engineering services, firstly, a quality patient care, financial savings, consultation services provided by this department, and the dealing with the regulations and the standards in general. Now we will address the second question, which is a better choice, the in-house or the out-house clinical engineering service. Concerning uh, the choices, there are many choices. We have the in-house or out-house. We have for-profit or non-for-profit. Usually, the outhouse is considered as a more uh, more expensive choice or even the most expensive choice. 
Many of these services can be provided for profit by for-profit companies, uh, like for example, third-party independent service providers and manufacturers. Whereas the in-house is considered as more cost-effective devices, uh, the reasons behind this, uh, firstly, uh, is the value-added advantages of a cradle-to-grave healthcare technology management approach if it has been utilized uh, by the hospital. So we have a complete solution from cradle to grave. Uh, the second reason behind uh, the adoption of the in-house choice is the response time, which is uh, the response time for the uh, clinical engineering, uh, the in-house clinical engineering service team will be very rap rapid by comparison to the manufacturer service. Uh, another reason is the integration of this depart uh, department uh, into the hospital or the healthcare system. Uh, it will be is a better uh, and a better to communicate and work with the other departments and to achieve the overall goal of this institution or hospital. Finally, the factors which we should consider when starting a clinical engineering service. Uh, the factors include firstly the inventory, the inventory of the medical devices and system. For example, uh, if a small hospital, we can have uh, an average like around uh, 1,000 device. If a medium-sized hospital, we have uh, an inventory of uh, inventory of uh, medical devices uh, between 2,000 to 3,000, and so on. So the inventory of the medical devices is an essential factor to consider when starting a clinical engineering service. Another also important factor which we should consider, the hospital demographics. Uh, firstly, the size of the hospital. We can have a hospital like uh, 100 bed size. We have 200, 400, uh, 600, 700. Also, we have a large hospital like uh, 2,000 bed capacity. Uh, also, if this hospital what type of this hospital? For example, we can have a general hospital, we can have a specialty hospital, we can have a medical center, we can have a medical city. Uh, also considering the hospital demographics, uh, it's important to know if this hospital will be a standalone hospital or a part of a network. Uh, another factors to consider when uh, starting a clinical engineering department is the expectation of for service. What do we mean by the expectation for service? If the service will uh, include all the equipment or a part or subset of these equipments, another point which we should consider during uh, or a factor which we should uh, consider when starting a clinical engineering department, uh, the uh, department financial structure if it is a chargeback, a strict budget, or contracted. It means a strict budget, we have a strict budget and we should uh, follow uh, the limitation within this budget. Uh, a final factor which we should, all, we should also consider during the starting of a clinical engineering uh, department is the senior management understanding of our value or our, our contribution for them. Uh, this very, uh, is very important in the success of uh, uh, starting a clinical engineering department.